puts down violence and produces violence. Harvey Weinstein made fortunes in Hollywood. What does he do every day? Makes a fortune producing smut and violence and then says he's going to put out a, a movie putting down the guns in the Second Amendment. I hope Harvey Weinstein's mother listens to this show and you could put some sense into that son of yours before it's too late. There are many members of an older generation who have children who have become communists, and they are the only chance we have is to save us from your children, your very successful, powerful children. So last night I watched that. Then to top it off, at 11 o'clock, I wanted to turn the TV off. I turned on the TV, and there was this Russian-language movie called Leviathan, which I told you about. And I had started to see it on a, on a uh, plane ride a few months ago to Florida. I couldn't find it again. I was captivated by its slow moving, and it's set up in the Barren Sea, and it's about a small time, small mechanic who lives in a house he built that his father, grandfather lived in, poor man, and a corrupt um, mayor wants the land that he lives on and tries to steal it from him for a very low price. And he lives with his uh, second wife, and he lives with a teenage boy, like 14, and it's the tension between the characters uh, that it makes this a work of art. The cinematography is overwhelming. There's only two pieces of music in it by Philip Glass. Look, it's an art film, I get it. And it won many awards, but it's not for the average listener of talk radio. So I put two and two together. I said, holy God, this is like what communism really was. Now look, remember, it's set after communism is basically gone in Russia, but it's still run like a communist state where a local political figure, think of a governor or a mayor who has absolute power like Governor Brown, or the mayor of San Francisco, where there's no opposition party. No opposition whatsoever, no checks and balances whatsoever, no FBI, no U.S. attorney. They're all in their pockets. Think about that. That's Russia, that's America today. So I said, oh my God, this is just what it was. So the whole movie is about crushing this man who wants to hold on to the house that his grandfather and father were in and what happens to him and his wife as a result of the power madness of this little bureaucrat this frighteningly fat mayor of the town and how evil he is. And all I saw was the faces of our senators, our Democrat senators in particular. That's all I saw in his eyes was the meanness of these bureaucrats, the madness of these senators, the power madness, the absolute power where they can get away with anything. They can make billions of dollars through their husbands or wives and nobody stops them. Why? Because we have descended to this level. Uh, at this point. So I said, I got to do this. So I start writing down what I'm going to do today. I make the notes and I'll read them to you again. This is one in the morning. I'm agitated. My heart's beating. I said, we'll talk about Mao's tactics and how the American left, Obama and the Dems are practicing all but the killings. How he was the father of political correctness. How the colleges and schools are mimicking Mao's China with indoctrination on a sexuality, behavior, climate, food, and so on. Get Obama the other day saying how his children understand global warming, but older people do not, exclamation point. The same exact pattern, only Mao killed the older generation using the Red Guards. Murderous children as young as 10. Reminds me of the mobs in Baltimore, Oakland, and Ferguson. Planning tomorrow's show about Mao, this is my last note. The father of political correctness and how his mass murder of 45 million Chinese who would not conform began with his cultural revolution during which 10 to 12 year old Red Guards murdered teachers, parents, intellectuals who were part of the quote old generation who did not believe in Mao Zedong's uh, viewpoints. How Obama and the Dems are following the same exact playbook without the murders and I left off at that. So I've done this show today and I can't stop. I'm wound up from this. And a caller in the last hour uh, alarmed me because he said he spent many years of his life in China and he's only recently, he came back only a few years ago, and he said, you're the only one in the media who knows about Obama. I said, yeah, I coined that phrase five years ago. He said he's practicing exactly the same tactics that, that Mao Zedong practiced in the early years. He sees it. He lived there. He was in the homes of the Red Guards who are now 70 years old. They remember who they were at 10 when they were torturing their teachers and killing them. He said the same thing is going on now on him. On, on the road, let's say, to that, on the road to that, how dangerous the times are. And then, I think it was the same caller who reminded me, he said, you know, your book, Government Zero, reminds him of year zero under Pol Pot. I said, wait a minute, I never heard that phrase. 
What is year zero? And he says, after Pol Pot left Cambodia and went to Paris to study Marxism, he came back and created a dictatorship under himself, like a mini Mao Zedong dictatorship in Cambodia. And he said there was no history in Cambodia before he came along. Year zero began when Pol Pot became the leader. And I got chills up my spine. 2008, year zero for America. The man has been trying to erase every semblance of the United States of America ever since this madman took over. Year zero, government zero. No borders, no language, no culture. It all came together for me. I hope it's come together for you. Let's go to Gordon on KSFO. Gordon, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your point? Hey, Michael, I, I, I saw that show about Mao last night. My wife and I watched it. And I just want to let you know, when I was in the service, I was there at the beginning of, of uh, year zero. We did the evacuation of uh, Phnom Penh in 1979. And then I went back as a medical volunteer in uh, 19, I mean, sorry, 1975, and went back in 1979 uh, nine as a medical volunteer and saw the results of year zero uh, that was there in year f uh, four. And it was atrocious. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Uh, worked in a So Pol Pot, the mild-mannered, the Pol Pot, the mild-mannered professor who went to study Marxism in Paris, came back, and as a result of his uh, transformation of Cambodia, Three million Cambodians were killed, isn't that correct? Yes, and the people in our refugee camp that I worked at, which was Cowie Dung, which was about two kilometers from the border of, uh, of Cambodia, oh. and uh, people there wouldn't even speak English for months because they were still afraid that us as medical volunteers were, were going to you know, basically turn them into the government. And they, you know, it, took, it took a long time for them to even trust us. Because so in other words, just as anyone in this country is attacked as being a racist, that's a, a code word for being a counter-revolutionary, isn't it? Yes, and it reminds me of what's going on now. And both my wife and I, when we saw the show about Mao, we said the same thing that happened then is happening now here. Uh, and we saw the results uh, live and, and actually you know, worked with the people and saw the death that you know, so you agree with me that Obama's a, a power crazed madman that must be stopped unless unless he is stopped the future is quite dim is that not true well the, it's dim now I mean it's scary I mean it's it's depressing uh, it's and then we wake up and every day he insults us in another way every day he raises the stakes today appointing a homosexual to run the US Army every day he does whatever he can to agitate people isn't that part of his technique his tactic rather Yes, sir, and that's why we're, my wife and I support Donald Trump, because we think he's the only guy that can bring us back. And that is why the members of the Reich are attacking Donald Trump. That is why Megyn Kelly is now basically a member of the Reich attacking Donald Trump. The entire Fox network is part of the Reich, the New World Order Reich. Thank you, my friend, for, let us say, testimony, your testimony today of the truth, a man who knows what's going on, doesn't imagine it's going on, is not one of the crazies, he's one of the realies. Let's use a new phrase, I'll start using their tech tactics. They call you a crazy, say no, we're a realie. That comes from uh, a couple of novels I loved reading in the 1960s and 70s, where words were made up by one of my favorite authors, A Clockwork Orange, for example. Words were amazingly interesting from that writer. I wish to God I could keep inventing words as I do on this show on a regular basis. But we are realies. We are real. We see what it is. You know, what is realism? You know, the truth is reality. Did you understand what the truth is? Truth is reality. And those who spew lies, I don't have to tell you who they are, want to twist reality. They want to... They want to make you believe that what you see and what you know to be true and real is not true and not real. Because they are the twisted ones. They are the drug addicts. They are the perverts. They are the anti-Christians. They're the ones who hate Israel and Jews. They are not the, the clear-thinking ones. We are. It's our nation. I have to pause. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. 
So the uh, I used to call it the government media complex. I'm now calling it the Reich because that's what it is. And if you uh, research the word, you'll see it's not about Nazi Germany. But of course, you'll knee jerk and say I'm calling it uh, uh, Hitler and this and that. You'll you'll try to dismiss it, but you'll lose because the word Reich is a correct description of what we have going on in America right now under the government media complex. Reich means realm, territory, kingdom, or empire. And that's why when I say all those in the Reich who are attacking Trump are members of the new Reich. You could call it the NWO, the New World Order, but I have created a word that's better for you, Reich. Hitler called his administration the, the Third Reich. Some would say what Obama's creating is a new Reich, a New World Order Reich, and he thinks that the world began when he became president in year zero. WFTL, oh, uh, let me go to line one, KSFO. Mike makes a great point. Mike, go ahead, fire away. You know, if you're a Muslim, you're born a Muslim through your father or whatever. You're a Muslim for life. And if you renounce your Muslim, your Islam faith, you're an apostolate. How can he negotiate with hardline Islamics like in Iran and not be called for to be stoned or turned out for being an apostolate? And uh, in other words, if he did convert to Christianity, they would consider him an apostate is what you're saying? That's it, and then they should be, in, and he's you know, dealing with some of the most rapid. I hear you. I hear you. No, these are the questions. It's why 20 to 25% of Americans still think he's a Muslim, despite what Megan Kelly of uh, the Fox Reich would have you believe. Mike, stay on the line. Government Zero will go out to you. Tom, WFTL in Florida, 30 seconds or less. Fire away. Yes, Dr. Savage. I'd just like to make the point that after Pol Pot murdered, mass murdered 3 million of his own people, Jimmy Carter threw the United States support behind Pol Pot, which gave him a seat as the Cambodian leader at the U.N. General Assembly. So Jimmy Carter is a fellow traveler with a mass murderer. I'm really shocked by that. The man who hates Israel as much as Khomeini does. Jimmy Carter, the, the lifetime Jew hater. I'm really shocked by that. You know, if you put the pieces together, now look at why they hate Israel. Why do those who support Pol Pot, support Mao Zedong, why do they hate Israel? Why do they hate Donald Trump? The answer is nationalism. Do you understand that? The only nationalism that is permitted is Muslim nationalism. Islamo nationalism is acceptable to the new Reich because there are too many Muslims for them to take on right now. But you see, Israel's small. There's not that many Jews. Ask Ann Coulter. She said, how many effing Jews are there? So she could work for the Reich. I hear that uh, uh, they're looking for a, a new spokesman in Iran, and since they're going to have $150 billion, I suggest that Ann go to uh, the CAA and see if they can represent her uh, with the new government in Iran. She could probably be the equivalent of Tokyo Rose for Iran's New Deal. Put down Jews every day and say you're not putting down Jews. If that doesn't work, Ann, you could always go to YouPorn. I hear they're looking for a new actress on YouPorn. A conservative one will attract more attention than uh, the normal run-of-the-mill run libs. Couldn't wait to get that in at the end of this important intellectual exercise, the Savage Nation. Never forget, year zero led to government zero. Savage.